Today, the Justice Department secured the conviction of four leaders of the Proud Boys for seditious conspiracy related to the January 6th attack on the Capitol. In addition, those defendants and a fifth member of the Proud Boys were all convicted of felonies, including obstructing Congress's certification of the 2020 presidential election results and conspiring to prevent Congress and federal officers from discharging their duties. The evidence presented at trial detailed the extent of the violence at the Capitol on January 6th and the central role these defendants played in setting into motion the unlawful events of that day. Today's verdict makes clear that the Justice Department will do everything in its power to defend the American people and American democracy. Since the January 6th attack, the Justice Department has conducted one of the largest, most complex, and most resource-intensive investigations in our history. We have worked to analyze massive amounts of physical and digital data. We have recovered devices, decrypted electronic messages, triangulated phones, and poured through tens of thousands of hours of video. We have also benefited from tens of thousands of tips we received from the public. Following these digital and physical footprints, we were able to identify hundreds of people who, often masked, took part in the unlawful conduct of that day. I am grateful to the department's prosecutors, FBI agents, investigators, analysts, and others who have worked on these cases with extraordinary diligence, skill, integrity, and courage. Over the past two years, the department has secured more than 600 convictions for a wide range of criminal conduct on January 6th, as well as in the days and weeks leading up to the attack. We have secured the convictions of defendants who fought, punched, tackled, and even tased police officers who were defending the Capitol that day, who crushed one officer in a door and dragged another down a flight of stairs, who attacked law enforcement officers with chemical agents that burned their eyes and skin, and who assaulted officers with pipes, poles, and other dangerous or deadly weapons. We have secured the convictions of defendants who obstructed the certification of a presidential election, as well as the subsequent criminal investigation in the events of January 6. And now, after three trials, we have secured the convictions of leaders of both the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers for seditious conspiracy, specifically conspiring to oppose by force the lawful transfer of presidential power. Our work will continue. At my Senate confirmation hearing just over a month after January 6th, I promised that the Justice Department would do everything in its power to hold accountable those responsible for the heinous attack that sought to disrupt a cornerstone of our democracy, the peaceful transfer of power to a newly elected government. And uh, as I have said repeatedly, the department will conduct all of its work in a manner that adheres to the rule of law and honors our obligations to protect the civil rights and civil liberties of everyone in this country. Today's verdict is another example of our steadfast commitment to keeping those promises. The Justice Department will never stop working to defend the democracy to which all Americans are entitled. All right, that's Attorney General Merrick Garland uh, not taking any questions, uh, speaking after four Proud Boys, four leaders of the far-right militia, the Proud Boys, were, were convicted of seditious conspiracy earlier today for their roles in the January 6th insurrection, for trying to stop what Attorney General Garland called a cornerstone of democracy, the peaceful transfer of power. Garland uh, calling today's verdict proof that the Justice Department will do everything in its power to defend American democracy. Uh, let's bring in CNN's Evan Perez and former federal prosecutor uh, Ellie Honig. Uh, Evan, um, you can tell there that the Attorney General feels as though he's doing what needs to be done. Yeah, Jake, today's uh, verdict, certainly on at least getting four of these leaders of the, of the Proud Boys, 
uh, convicted on this very rarely brought charge, seditious conspiracy, was a big deal for the department. It's something that the Attorney General and others uh, really weighed for weeks and weeks and weeks before they actually brought it. And you can see the fact that he came out and spoke about this, uh, the importance that they gave having the jury after uh, 18 to 20 weeks here of trial uh, coming back and, and, and rendering this, this verdict. And let me say, just step back a couple of minutes here, for, for a little bit here, for, to talk about what this means, right? Um, there were two parts, or there were a couple parts uh, to the effort to try to overturn the election. One of them was simply the, the former president trying to claim that there was fraud and, and doing everything they could to try to get the states to, to not uh, send in their electors. The other part, uh, the Justice Department has pointed out, is the, the, the people who gathered there on January 6th to, to make a last-ditch effort after the former president had failed in every other way. They, these people uh, tried to uh, get into the Capitol to try to disrupt the proceedings of Congress, and they nearly succeeded. It wasn't, if it wasn't for the fact that Mike Pence refused to leave and the members of the Senate and Congress came back and certified that election that night, it, it very well could have happened, right? They could, they could have succeeded in this. And so one, one of the things that we heard from the Attorney General there is over 1,000 people have been charged for, you know, breaching the Capitol, the violence related to that. 600 so far have either been pleaded guilty or have been convicted. The big question that remains, and I think you're going to hear for this from Ellie a little bit, is whether the former president himself and people around him in the other part of this, uh, th this conspiracy, th this effort, rather, uh, whether they will face uh, similar charges, and we don't know. Yeah, and Ellie, I'll get to you in a second, but I want to go to CNN's Caitlin Palance, who's outside the courthouse here in Washington, D.C. Uh, Caitlin, uh, Attorney General Garland noting that now both the leaders of the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers, two different, distinct, far-right militia groups, leaders of both have been found guilty of seditious conspiracy. And as we've talked about for years now, that's not an easy charge to prove in a court of law. It's not at all. It is very, very difficult for the Justice Department to even get to the point where they want to bring that charge. It was a charge that first uh, was born out of the Civil War. Uh, and then in recent years, until the January 6th insurrection, it essentially was very, very difficult uh, to gain any convictions on. And so since then, uh, the Justice Department has used all of the video. Garland was talking about thousands and thousands of hours of video, all of the photos, text messages, other messages that they gathered between these members of the groups to be able to say, these aren't just people that arrived at the Capitol on January 6th and were violent there, were swept up in the crowd, grabbed a riot shield and broke into a window like Dominic Pizzola was convicted of today. But there were people who were in the leadership positions in both the Oath Keepers and in the Proud Boys who were collectively wanting to use politics to spur violence in this country. And that they came together, made an agreement, and that agreement was that they would want to use some sort of force to disrupt democracy and to disrupt the functioning of the U.S. government on January 6th. It is not a small thing at all for the Justice Department to have these convictions today. All right, Allie, it has been more than two years since the Capitol insurrection. insurrection. What do you make? of the pace of these convictions, the aggressiveness of these charges from the Justice Department. Well, Jake, I think Merrick Garland and the Justice Department absolutely deserve credit for today's verdict. It's a big deal. It's a historic case. Same thing for the prior convictions for seditious conspiracy against Oath Keepers and Proud Boys. However, in the big picture, they have not done the job. When you look at seditious conspiracy charges, we've now seen 10 people in this entire country convicted of seditious conspiracy in relation to January 6th. 10 people. Does anyone realistically think only 10 people? We've seen the video of how many people were storming the Capitol, trying to obstruct the counting of ballots. So I think they've been insufficient in the way they've charged seditious conspiracy against the people who physically entered the Capitol. Now, who is the single most powerful political person who Merrick Garland has charged with anything in connection to January 6th. There is none. Nobody above ground level has been charged with anything. Enrique Tarrio, the leader of the Proud Boys, is the first person who wasn't physically present who's been charged in relation to January 6th. And Garland quoted himself just now. He went back to his confirmation hearing and he quoted how he said, we will pursue those responsible for this attack. But he said that a bunch of times since. And he had said previously three words that he left out today at any level. That's usually the way he says it. We will pursue anybody 
at any level. They've not lived up to that in two and a half years, and I think it was conspicuously absent from what he said today. But who would you go after? I mean, based on what we know today, who, who at any level, sure. who, who, who else should be prosecuted? And, you know, keeping in mind what Omar on The Wire would say, if you come for the king, <laughs> you best not miss. Right. Yeah, well familiar with that quote. First of all, I would charge anybody who breached the Capitol chamber that day, and there were hundreds or dozens of them who went in there, anybody who physically went into the Capitol and took steps onto that floor, what were they seeking to do to obstruct the electoral count? That meets the legal definition of sedition if they used any force, if they attacked a police officer, if they destroyed property. So you I would start with that. As I said earlier, judges have criticized DOJ for not bringing enough seditious conspiracy charges, for being too timid in their charges against people who breached the Capitol. With respect to Donald Trump, I do think the evidence is there based on what we know to charge him, based on all the things he said, based on the reasonable inferences that we've heard from these defendants. They believe that he was instructing them and they reasonably took it to mean, I want you to go in there and block the counting of the electoral ballots.